Um, the big problem is that COVID wrecked the school system. As you know, it wrecked a lot of things. And there's a lot of families that were displaced and had to become homeschoolers, even though they weren't really wanting to do that. A huge number of those families have switched, um, either didn't go back or they've switched back and things just aren't the way they used to be. And so they are looking for a solution. They're not really sure where to turn or what to do. And that's where we come in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Smelling Pies. There you go. Hello. Good morning, Albuquerque. Good morning. Are we using a mic today? Yeah, go ahead. I could do it this way. Good morning, Albuquerque, and welcome to One Million Cups. It's nine o'clock on Wednesday morning, and that means uh, at least local time, entrepreneurs all across the country are gathering for One Million Cups in one place or another. Your hands are full. My hands are full. I'll put down my coffee. All right. A clicker. All right. So first things first, check in, point your uh, phone at that screen and go to that QR code. That lets the Kaufman Foundation know that we actually have people here and that they are vying for exciting prizes. So if you check in on three different days, you'll get a pen. Six different days, you'll get a notebook. Uh, I have both and I treasure them. All right, here is our mission. Um, it's tough being an entrepreneur. And so our mission at One Million Cups is to lower the barrier of entry for entrepreneurs to resources and education and connection for all entrepreneurs to help them in their difficult journey. And how do we do that? Uh, there, the Kauffman Foundation makes a consistent program. They train the organizers uh, and give us back in support um, so that we are able to implement the same format at all of the locations of Million Cups all across the country. And so if you ever drop in somewhere else, even though you might not know the people, you'll find the format very familiar. Uh, yes, this is the Southwest region. We are the only folks in New Mexico, uh, but that makes us the number one one million cups chapter in New Mexico. And we achieve that through a small denominator. Uh, but you're encouraged to visit uh, these other places, either physically or by Zoom. Of course, by Zoom, you'd have to skip this one. So go to New York and go to the million cups there at seven in the morning local time here. So uh, then you could have a cup of coffee and come here and go to a second one in one day. Can't get too much of this. Okay, what are our key pillars? Presentations, not pitches. Okay, the pitch. It's your company's flawless. You have the perfect team. Uh, the only thing you lack is probably money and you're asking for that, okay? So we don't do that here. We expose our vulnerabilities. We talk about our challenges. Uh, and when you do that, it works. And I can say, I did it last week and it really did work. We probably, uh, with board approval, have a horse-oriented marketing person who is ready to come on and I talked to her yesterday. So, uh, you know, doesn't get any better than that. Like five days later, we have a solution to the challenge. So, so folks, get up here and do it. All right. So these are authentic connections, not networking. I didn't get this person by passing out uh, the maximum number of business cards in 60 seconds. I got this person by building a relationship over time and by saying the challenges that I faced as an entrepreneur. So, um, that's what you should do when you're working the room before and after Million Cups. Talk about uh, what lies ahead for you, um, things you need help with, or things you know that might be useful to other people, and you'll make authentic connections. So we're run for the community, by the community. We're not compensated except in all kinds of intangible ways. We're all volunteers, uh, but we all like what we do. And we're radically and intentionally inclusive. So Million Cups includes... Um, brick and mortar, mom and pop operations, you know, family kind of businesses, things that are never going to scale or seek investment, things that are at the whiteboard stage, things that are, you know, a few clicks away from an A round, you name it, everybody is welcome here. And so you'll see all different kinds of levels of experience. Some people will have more experience than you and some people will have less. Learn from the people that have more and help out the people who have less. So that's how Million Cups holds together. So there's our mission. Uh, be nice to everybody. Remember, it's about education. And uh, you can also apply to present. If you haven't presented for a while, uh, it, at, at the six month mark, you'll get a reminder from Million Cups, which is great. Uh, if you have a for-profit business, you are welcome. And a for-profit business is defined as a company that sells goods or services to people 
that they're not related to for, for more than it costs to make them. Okay, that's a for-profit company. So uh, if you apply, we'll assign you a coach and we'll uh, nudge you into the Million Cups format and tighten up your presentation as much as possible. And we hope you'll have a good experience here. All right, this is the organizing team. I'm Paul Sauter, Lisa Atkins right here. Fat Pipe has been our host for uh, eight years now, coming up on nine. And uh, Eric Rins Whitmore, probably online. Uh, Adam's right here. Uh, Sonia, probably online. And Keiko and Oscar are making everybody look good. So uh, thanks to all those folks. And anytime you want to present, you're going to talk to one of us. One more. There we go. And it's also a pleasure to thank our sponsors, Fat Pipe again, our generous host for all these years. Jason Collins Photography, always making us look good, more than organized, or organizing your stuff, your thoughts, and providing creamer. Foundation for Sustainable Living, uh, providing coffee for us, uh, but it's not the coffee that they sell. And Minuteman Press, making things look good on paper. Noventum Custom Software, making all the lights blink and all the gears turn. And also providing donuts. Uh, and in Vive Solutions, uh, when they're here, uh, tea and fruit for those shaking off the demon bean. All right, thanks for joining us and I'll introduce our presenter. All right. Kara, I'm gonna pin you. Ouch. Actually, I'm going to replace you as the pin. You are good. You <laughs> okay, and I'll share my screen. All right. And good morning, Kara's everybody. Story about Little Lions Learn, uh, including a fantastic COVID-induced pivot. Take it away, Karen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Kara Sandoval. I am the founder and CEO of Little Lions Learn, the homeschool learning adventure. We are dedicated to helping families who are wanting to make a switch from public school to homeschool, and we offer classes that parents aren't comfortable teaching or they don't want to teach. So this is me. I have been in education for over 13 years. I um, found the world of online education back in 2016. I love online education, have a passion for language learning and also for homeschooling. So um, I found my partner, Carrie Villalobo, my new partner. Uh, she joined me back in March. She lives in New Mexico and I've known her for a very long time. She's really awesome. We're working well together. Um, this is our story. This is who we help. We are helping children like or families like Jennifer, and they need more of a flexible schedule. We're helping families like John, who had some safety concerns at school. We're helping children like Sarah, who has um, maybe some differences in their philosophy of education and their values. So they're looking for a change. Our mission is to help families that are switching from public school to homeschool. And we as certified, we are certified teachers who have left the public school system to help these families. And um, we're basically giving them a peace of mind. We're giving, you know, allowing them to be part of their child's education. And um, we're giving them everything they need, a support system. So we're here to help those types of families. Um, the big problem is that COVID wrecked the school system. As you know, it wrecked a lot of things. And there's a lot of families that were displaced and had to become homeschoolers, even though they weren't really wanting to do that. A huge number of those families have switched, um, either didn't go back or they've switched back and things just aren't the way they used to be. And so they are looking for a solution they're not really sure where to turn or what to do, and that's where we come in. So we are offering a full year's curriculum in a chosen subject. We are generally teaching math, English language arts, and Spanish as a second language. We do teach other subjects by request. The cool thing about our program is that we have a about 25 minute classes and that's to limit screen time because we are online. And then we provide everything the families need. So we give them an ad additional work that they can complete at home for independent practice. Our classes are one-on-one -on -one, 
and they are also up to one to six. So the families get to pick what they're looking for. Um, and we're just um, a support system for these families. So that's our, our goal. Um, the homeschool market has grown exponentially. Um, it did have a small dip, but it's gone back up. There's approximately uh, 3.7 million homeschoolers right now. My numbers look a little funny there, sorry. <laughs> we are starting to focus in the Arizona market um, for the reason that Arizona offers this really cool, um, it's called Arizona Empowerment Scholarship Fund. And it's money basically that goes from public education to homeschooling. So the child takes that money with them. They're able to use that money on school supplies, curriculum, classes like what we teach. And back in 2019, there was only around 6,450 students using this funding. Um, currently, there are around actually over 50,000 um, students that are utilizing the Arizona Empowerment Fund. We're going to be attending a homeschool conference in July, the 14th and 15th here in Arizona. And um, the conference is kind of our hard launch. So we, we do have three students enrolled right now, but this is our, our hard launch coming up in July. So we're just now pivoting. Um, our challenge, I think, has not really changed from what it used to be to what it is now. We're looking for our customers. <laughs> We're looking for people that want what we have to offer. Um, we are gaining a lot of um, momentum, which is um, pretty good, and it's a little different than in the past, so I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, our target customer, just based on things that we have um, different things that we've learned about uh, different platforms that we've utilized, uh, we've come to see that our target market are women between the ages of 25 and 34, and then a smaller portion is 35 to 44. So those moms looking for support. So basically, <laughs> um, sorry, I turned this into PowerPoint last minute. So that's why the the words look kind of funny here. Um, I'm, I'm asking that you guys share what we're doing with others. That's my ask for today. Um, I did put up a link to our Pinterest. That's where we're gaining a lot of uh, momentum, YouTube, and our, our website if you're interested in following us. And that's it. I don't know if that was six minutes, but <laughs> if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, thank you, Kara. So uh, questions in-house, form a line here, and when you ask your question, uh, let us know your name and what organization you're with, and we're also taking questions online. Hey, Kara. Hey, David. Bonnie says hi. Hi. <laughs> Tell her hi. <laughs> I will. I'm David Murphy of Core Visual. So, Kara, the one, I'm curious about the one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. um, the how, how does this, like, how many kids do you have to teach to make money? What are you charging? Just that general question of how this yeah. is economically sustainable. So we have we have actually several packages that um, parents can pick depending on what they're interested in. Um, so far, we have three enroll students. One of them is actually a past student that used to take Spanish lessons with us. Um, they're not homeschoolers, but they still want to take classes with us. Um, and she's just taking our lowest package. Well, it's actually not our lowest package, but it's one of our lower packages, which is just one-on-one, um, -on -one, once a week. Um, and so that's $80 a month. Um, and then I have two enrolled students that are um, taking one of our larger packages, and that is three subjects. So they're, they're going to be taking math, English, and Spanish. Um, four days a week. We don't teach Fridays, so we teach Monday through Thursday, um, and that one is $360 a month. And so we, we're looking for around 20 students to get started and be successful for us, and then hopefully grow from there. That's our, our plan. Okay. Does that answer you. your question? It does, thank you. Okay, perfect. So Miriam and then Eric online. Hello, uh, Hi. Miriam Lizzie Pino, More Than Organized. Um, I'm curious about your marketing. You mentioned that you are getting some momentum and it wasn't exactly where you thought it would be. And yeah. I'm wondering what, what, what kind of niche have you pulled out of um, homeschool that you can really focus in on to, to continue with that momentum? Yeah, so we're, we're really looking for the students that um, are 
transitioning from public school to homeschool, we're looking for that type of family because the families that have been homeschooling for years, um, they've already got down their routine. They know, you know, what curriculum they use and they've, they've got that down. So we're looking for students that um, are, you know, families that are nervous for the change. And there's a lot of families like that out there um, or they're working full time and they're trying to juggle um, and it makes it really difficult um, and they don't know where to turn. So we're a support system for those types of families. Um, we really started off with Pinterest. We've gained huge momentum, like in the thousand percent range um, where people are following us and heading over to our website. Um, we've gained a lot of momentum on YouTube. We're offering some free Spanish and English course, courses on there. Um, and we we've only been doing that for a couple of weeks and we've just hit our hundred follower mark. So we're happy about that. Not a hundred K, but a hundred. <laughs> and I'm oh, really excited. Years. Yeah, That's a lot. <laughs> I'm really excited about that because it's growing pretty quickly in the last couple of weeks. Um, and then we started advertising on Facebook, which I've done in the past and I had some momentum, but not the way we are now. We're getting um, huge click over, you know, clicks to our website. Um, and we've had a lot of people um, inquire. So we're, we're excited about that. And I was not expecting Facebook to be where it's at, but it looks like that's uh, one place that we're going to continue to try to advertise and, and find people. And then I'm hoping that our homeschool conference is, you know, will bring, bring in quite a few. Excellent. Um, also, I think you're not charging enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Aaron? Eric, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll say Miriam asked most of the good questions. So I got some of those things out of the way. I'm curious what one different question is. Is there, oh, I don't know if it's research or whatever. I'm curious to what extent you can say prove the efficacy of working with you versus other methods. Is that something that's sort of still coming together? So a lot of that ends up being anecdotal. Like, you know, we love this and my kid actually sits down and does something. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I'm curious on, the, on like the data side of things, how, how are you exploring or pursuing that? So I'm not sure that I 100% understand your question. Mm -hmm. are, you asking a, are you asking me um, how we're going to like show families that what we're doing is actually helping their children? Or that's that's the, for those okay. for those of us who are like very data based, you know, show me the numbers. <laughs> I'm curious well, if there, how, how much you have in that regard. I mean, all I can really say is that we're we're teachers. And so, mm -hmm. you know, even though we're helping homeschool families, we come from a teacher background and, and yeah. very data driven. So we, um, you know, give pre and post tests. We make sure to give those little um, assessments in between and make sure that the kids are actually growing. And so I think that's something that's really beneficial. We're also not just tutoring, we're, we're teaching a full year's curriculum. Mm -hmm. So we're starting from beginning to finish in that grade level and helping the kids, um, you know, to make sure that they're learning. Um, as far as online, we're focused on just the 25 minutes, because mm -hmm. I know for from experience that more than that can be, um, you know, they lose focus and attention and 25 is the perfect amount of time. So um, that's from experience. But as far as like being able to prove it, I mean, we're going to have to teach some classes first <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and get that data. But I don't know if that answers your question. I think, I think it does. And I think, I mean, to me, what I'm hearing is for those of us parents who are, you know, maybe worried about leaving the, the standard environment and going to something online, it feels like you've got the rigor and you've got, you know, the expertise that it, it seems a little fuzzy sometimes in the, the homeschool world. So thanks. I appreciate that. Sure. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, my Hi. name's Marlene Brown. I'm a CNM faculty. Nice. And I, my question is, you're, you have one-on-one -on -one classes. Yes. Are they live for 25 minutes each they're time? Live. Yeah, they're live. So um, if a, a parent decides to do the 25 one-on-one, uh, -on -one, it would be with a teacher for that amount of time. Is that? So what about recording? I mean, having recorded, because that sounds really um, not scalable. Yeah. 
Ooh, that's skill. Ah. difficult because you're always just one-on-one -on -one and redoing the most, same most thing. Of, most of our students enroll in one to six just because of, like it saves them money um, and they also want to be able to collaborate with other kids that's a huge concern of a lot of homeschool um, people that want to move to homeschool is the socialization piece of it so um, a lot of a lot of parents choose the one one to six um, however the one on the, say that again what does that mean, one to six? It's one teacher, six kids. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And that, then, yeah. so we, we offer both. We offer one-on-one. -on -one. It's more expensive, um, but it's definitely scalable because we can hire as many teachers as we need and we're, you know, still making that money. So, um What's your limit? Like, what's your options? Or do you have I, it? I don't think we really have a limit. I mean, we're looking for 20 students okay. right now that are taking our more full-time course. Um, but there's no limit. There's a lot of teachers leaving the profession, too, that, that love teaching and want to, to still teach, but don't want to be in certain environments. And so I, I don't really think that there's a limit. I think we could definitely find teachers. That part's easy. So, so. What, something that would be helpful is to have it clear about what your options are. Because it yeah. sounds like I don't know what full-time is compared to not full-time or when you were yeah. just- Yeah, the, the full-time is like the three classes that we offer. And oh. the part-time is maybe just taking one, like maybe math, just math or just Spanish. That would okay. be considered more part-time. All right. Uh, yeah, I just, it was just a little unclear what the. Okay. Th thank you for asking. I apologize about that. Yeah, that's all right. Let's go to Jay online. Oh, hey. I just wondered about like, have you considered tutoring? Um, you know, that could bring in like another line of revenue and it's less like sort of, sort of onerous than a full scale curriculum for like a school kind of. Um, and then for the online classes, like for kids who are enrolled, like my kids are enrolled in APD, like, um, could they take it as like, almost like a tutoring kind of thing if they're having trouble with Spanish or math or something? Uh, it kind of depends. They might be able to, um, we are, we're running more as a homeschool program. So we are running Monday through Thursday, um, general work hours. We're not looking to teach in the evening and on the weekends. And so it may not work for um, some students who are, you know, in school, but uh, one of our enrolled students is enrolled in school um, and she is just taking Spanish with us. And she takes class at like 3.30 uh, p.m. mountain time. And so um, it is doable for sure. Um, we're not considering tutoring. There's a lot of tutors out there. Um, and this is kind of our, our niche is that we're here to have kind of offer a full support system to those families wanting to move to homeschool. So we're not looking to just kind of help with one little thing here or there. Um, we're looking to be kind of that, that teacher for them, if that helps answer your question. Thanks. Sure. Oh, good morning, Kara. I'm Barbara Dawson, and Hi, I am with um, Purple Mulch. I raised four children and unschooled them. Nice. So, yeah, and I, so like birth to high school. Um, so a couple of things, you may have already answered this because I was wondering if you know of a company called A Plus Academic Coaching and they do things like help people prepare for SATs and ACTs going into college. Do you do, and that's more the tutoring side, which I'm hearing you don't really want to get into. Is that correct? That's correct. Right now we're starting with um, K-6. I don't want to scale too big right now just because we've got to kind of have a focus area. Um, but I mean, I, that's definitely something to consider. I think a lot of homeschool families would want that, right, to get them ready to, for college. Um, so definitely in the future, I think that's a great idea um, to help prepare them. Maybe it could be a full course <laughs> to help them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and the other thing, as an unschooler, we had groups that we got together with. Do you have anything in the, you're in Arizona, Phoenix, Tucson? Yeah, we're, I'm in, I'm in um, Mesa, which is just outside of Phoenix. Um, we don't have anything like that right now, although I think it's a real need. And so I know there's a new company out there called, I don't know how new they are, they're called K-Pods. And this thing's kind of blowing up. Um, a lot of people are wanting in-person 
meeting with other kids. So it's definitely something for us to consider. Um, I'm, I'm at the point where we're, we're kind of hard launching in July, but if things don't go our way, we may start to consider some of those other types of things as well, because people do want to meet in person. And so something like that would be kind of cool. I just think it's a little harder to do um, since we're teaching online, but I don't know. Yeah, and, and we did like the Explora Science Center, those kinds of things, so that we could get our science and math in. Right. <laughs> And have it done in a fun way. So it was very, very effective. Nice. So like good luck idea. in what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, take it on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, Athena Christa Dulu, president of Cecil Power, and I raised three sons. I did not homeschool them. They were better off going out. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to ask you, and because you don't live in Albuquerque, have you ever heard of the family school in Albuquerque? Because yeah, that is a I'm actually from Albuquerque, born and raised. I just moved to Phoenix a couple of years ago, um, and I am familiar with the home, the family school. Um, they do part. I, I don't know if I'm fully familiar, but I know that they do part from home and part at the school. They have a facility, I'm pretty sure. It's a bunch of barracks, and I don't remember the street. Do it, so I can but, tell you. <laughs> yeah. They have a choice. There's two schools. There's one okay. that has 80%, um, uh, 80, 20, and I don't even remember which one's, the, which, one's which, but they have a 50 50 as well. Yeah. Okay. So parents can Love choose. that idea too. Just not sure if we're ready to like get a building, but. It's definitely um, something to consider. <laughs> well, they're actually they're actually associated with the Albuquerque Public Schools. Yeah, so this is a private endeavor. I didn't actually realize that. I didn't know they were part of APS. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, I, I'm Adam. I'm Sparks Flow. I have a company that talks about the brain. Um, and actually, my child goes to um, Desert Willow Family School as well. And there's another one called Coyote on the other side. Coyote uh, Willow. Um, and uh, I think the question was whether that's a market for you, right? Not that you would start your own. Yeah. Anyway, so they, those are folks that are trying to figure out where they are between homeschool and public school. Right. So that might be, that might be something that you're um, interested in. Uh, my question, though, is actually more about the virtual thing. It was kind of uh, prompted by Barbara's question about being in person and your, your response to that. And um, I learned a lot of things online during COVID. And I thought it was phenomenal because of all the logistics I didn't have to deal with. And then I'm also, I tried when I started doing my own thing, I tried to do it in person and hybrid. And in the end, just decided that online, I couldn't see any, dis I could see few disadvantages aside from people's opinion that it would have a difference. And I, I haven't seen anything that gives the impression that online is any less of a learning thing, and rather it's possibly much more advantageous to be online, especially if it's visual. What have you found? Um, I, I found that some parents do kind of hesitate um, to have classes online, but I think they're used to what happened during COVID, which is, you know, like their kid had to sit in, a com in front of a computer all day from start to finish, and that's not really effective. Um, I think in short short doses with uh, that added support is really beneficial. And I think we can do just as well online as we can in person. Um, there's actually a lot of cool interactive things that you can do in an online class. I don't know if that answers your question, but I think there, there's a little bit of hesitancy, um, but I'm able to, you know, kind of help those families understand that, um, you know, we're, we're giving the classes in small, small amounts, and then they have their other work that they can do at home too. So I don't know. Have you made any marketing that pivots or that uh, focuses on the advantages you've seen or statistics you, you, you could draw up of the advantages of online versus personal, since that's the direction you want to go, and it seems to be defining no, and I'm going to write that down because I think that's a great idea. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, we have not um, focused on that, but I love that idea. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you because that, that's something I don't think I've done much either of like focusing on the power of that particular approach as opposed to just sort of like saying, 
oh yeah, people have a choice, but you know, why? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. In person, really. Yep, that's going to be my next blog. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? All right. One more. Good morning, I'm JJ. Um, I just had a quick question. There, there were several questions about the the pricing. On yeah. It. Um, how does your the full time pricing compare to the um, the state funding that Arizona is? Okay, offering? so they they are providing um, it's around eighteen hundred per quarter, um, and parents can use that pretty much on supplies, curriculum, classes. They can use it on extracurriculars if they want to, like swim lessons. Um, it, they have to be approved through the, the a Arizona Empowerment Scholarship in order to, to accept funding. Um, but our pricing would allow for them to take class and have additional funds, which I think is really helpful. I don't know if that that answers your yeah, question. That's perfect. Okay, Kara. So it is my honor to be able to ask you New Mexico's official state question, red or green? <laughs> Definitely both. I, I do like red, but I like I like them together. So great answer. You love everything. All yeah. right. And what can this community do for you? Um, my my ask really is just to share with others. So if you know of families that are wanting to make the switch, share, say, hey, I know little lions learn and point them to us. That would be really helpful. Well, thanks so much. And let's give her a hand. Thank you. What's next, events? Do events. Let's do events. There aren't many. Uh, there's an Aller Pops event. There's an Aller Pops Come on up, Cliff, and pitch it. I'll tell you. I have a card for you. And actually, Cliff, how many people do we have registered? Yeah, that's right. We have not registered. So All right. Nobody can hear you, Cliff. So let's start with the date, place, and time. That's right. That's right. So next week. Come up here. Next week. Phone. All right. And look into the camera. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm staying on this camera. Okay, next week on Wednesday, from five to eight o'clock, we'll have an event here, at our Ops event. So uh, we'll have celebrate uh, our shipment, uh, where we are as as company. Uh, we have shipped all those research and development milestones, and you'll hear about that, and then you'll see uh, where we are going next step, next phase. Uh, it's a fundraising as all together. So. Welcome here. We'll have a drinks and a food here. So, and uh, social together with your fellow entrepreneurs. All right. How many Thank you. Do if you registered so far, six days right now. No, but how many people do we have registered? Yeah, 60. 60. Sorry, yes. I thought you said yeah. six days. <laughs> 60. That's awesome. 60, that's good. High five. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Yeah, take a copy if you have not resisted. Thank you. Thanks, Cliff. Thanks. Yeah, so a week from today, show up here and leave without your allergies. Uh, anything else? I haven't gotten Founder Syndicate email for this month. Eric, do you have anything more? Yeah, I got a couple of things that I'll, that I'll share. One, um, not So one of them that I think I might have shared it before, but uh, there's a date change. So the uh, New Mexico Angels, they've got their uh, their quarterly special event is taking place in Santa Fe now on the 19th. I think I said the 20th last week, and it was as of last week. But uh, that'll be at Santa Fe Brewing. It's uh, one of the bigger events, uh, I think more popular events that you do in the year, which is great. If you're into responsible entrepreneurship, uh, John Mertz, who's visited a few times and is now part of a thing called the Center for Responsible Entrepreneurship, he's doing a new meetup in Santa Fe, and that's going to run monthly on Thursdays, I guess the second Thursday, and that is uh, at Iconic Red. Um, but those are the two that I've got. Thank you. Gary, do you have anything with the city? And Sonia um, has one. Okay. I, I need to look up a date though. I, there's a, I wanted to mention again, the VIN etching um, event. It's this month at Cabela's, but I need to get the date and time and I'll get that to you. It's before the next, uh, next Wednesday or it's, um, it's after next Wednesday. So I'll get you Great. the date the next time. Um, so sorry, <laughs> I can't find it.
Thanks, Carrie. Sonia, what's your event? All right. Well, if anyone wants to dress up and get all fancy, so this Friday is the New Mexico Entertainment Awards. The first time, the first time they're holding this. And uh, I am actually up for one of the top five authors in New Mexico, which is crazy. But uh, I'm putting the link in the chat in case anybody wants to check that out. So Sonia has neglected to mention that among the other five nominees, uh, they include George R.R. R. Martin. So oh. Sonia has earned a place uh. <laughs> in the competition uh, with someone who needs no introduction. So congratulations, Sonia. Thank you. Where is it, Sonia? Yeah, it's at the Chemo Theater, Friday uh, the night. the Chemo. Wow. Yeah. So all that and uh, Pueblo Deco at the same time. Yes. So uh, that's it for events, right? So now I see some new faces. So it never pays to be shy as an entrepreneur. So show that you've got what it takes by getting in line here. If you're new here, if this is your first time and I see a couple of people uh, that are new, come on up, uh, tell us your name, uh, what you're with if you're over there, if you're an entrepreneur and your example will get other people in line. Anybody else new here? Come on up, don't be shy. They can't say yes unless you ask. All right, take it away. Hi, I'm Marilyn Pruitt. I, I, I've started collecting companies and it's all been accidental. The first one is I teach piano and I love it. It's mostly to homeschoolers. I homeschool myself, but things, you know, life moves on. And a couple of, well, two, last two years ago in August, I was, I say, innocently sitting on my couch and this big, powerful feeling came, you need to start a garden. Bottom line is it's over 3,000 square feet and I sell a lot at the farmer's market. And that got me to, I invited a friend down that I met and offered her to use some of my land. I've got all of two acres. And she wanted, uh, she's, she's got farming in her blood. She wanted to do something so bad. I said, look, you can do something with the rest of that. And she said, chickens. Mm -hmm. So now I'm also selling home raised, organic fed chickens. I've got some samples of that, that Eleni, uh, Eleni brought me here. And the next thing, Eleni insists I need to start one more business. And this is something totally different. It's life coaching. And it, it's, it's that the, we've come up with a name stage and it's the peaceful path because I've been through enough challenges that I have done some very powerful life coaching. She had a challenge, came to me, and what I did with her changed her life. And ever since then, she has been after me. You have to share this with other people. Marilyn, they need this. And so we are coming up with how to do it. And essentially, it's how to stay in the victory cycle or the flow or the where the good things happen, where everybody just clicks and you stay away from those negative things. And it's all about being in that good place. And I hope in the next few weeks that we'll, we'll yeah, the goal is to have something at the, at the 21st of July is what Eleni wants us to do. And I think it's totally doable if we can get the flyer up and running today so you can see what this is. So thank you. You're welcome. Like you have a few businesses to apply to prison. I, yes. And are there chickens in that bag? Just two. First two people get a breast or drumsticks. Oh. Just, <laughs> but I've got beets on that. Yeah. Hi. Hello. I've come down from Taos. Um, I am a healer and oh, I'm a knight. My, my business is Dreamtime Healings which has been going on for a long time, but Dreamtime Church is new. Um, I've been a healer for 15 years, working high, with highly sensitive people and empaths. We often think that that's a, a curse rather than a blessing. And in the past four years, I am leading psilocybin with cacao ceremonies, psilocybin magic mushrooms. And when I heard that word, I wasn't sure what that was. So it's, um, I have, I've created Dreamtime Church to be able to do this legally. Um, 
I was I came I been, was in Boulder for twelve years and was guided to go to Taos. That's where I'm where I'm at. And um, so I'm opening. I'm continuing to spread that beautiful medicine and helping people awaken and heal and uh, move into a, a brighter place. I can vouch for Helen. Um, anybody else? Do you have any newbies online? Reinhard, I think you might be new or returning after a while. Oh, you just got up from the chair. Jump it off camera. <laughs> oh, you got a mic now. That's great. I wasn't prepared for this, but um, yeah, Reinhard Lorenz, not so newbie. Um, I've been around for a while as an entrepreneur, but actually not for a while on the scene, shall we say, of entrepreneur meetings. So thanks for keeping One Million Cups going. And uh, I run a film production company called First Eye Films. So we produce uh, on a more local level for clients between nonprofits and, and corporate. And then I also work in the film industry as a line producer on projects that come to shoot here in New Mexico. Nice to see you. Yes, same here. Anybody else new online? All right. I guess, Paul, it's time to... Almost. You ever sit at a meeting and say, boy, if I could get that mic, I could give them 60 seconds, I'll never forget. If anybody has is in that state of mind right now, come on up and do a lightning round. Aww. Anybody got 60 seconds for us? I mean, you know I do, but you heard me last week. Come on. All got right. 60 seconds. Tell us what's new and what's hot, right? Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Um, after years of trying to do this between clients, I'm finally putting my online course up on the internet within the next couple of weeks. If all goes well, things are at the editor of things are at the proofreading. Um, so that's exciting. Um, and it's helping with my pivot as I'm working with more busy creative people to connect the productivity with the organization with the money mindset so you can leverage your time and take care of it all at the same time instead of different times. All right, let's hear it for Miriam because as Steve Jobs said, real artists ship, right? So if you're shipping product and you have a deadline, you yeah. gotta do it. Right? A goal is just a dream with a deadline. Anybody else? All right. So uh, I'm going to close this out and uh, you guys get to work the room and uh, talk to each other and teach each other things and learn things. So uh, I told a couple people before we started that I had a spectacular outcome last week. And uh, I asked for someone who understood uh, the language of horse people and someone who's experienced in marketing. And I got both in one person. And we had a fantastic Zoom call yesterday and pending board approval, she's going to join us for marketing. So um, I encourage you to take my advice as I do. And if, you, if when I take my own advice, you know, sometimes reluctantly, it does work. There's a great community out there of people who want to help you. People want to see you succeed. People understand that success of any company in New Mexico helps all the other companies. So between now and next week, go out there and give somebody a hand or take help from somebody else and let's lift up New Mexico. See you next week.